good morning so let us continue with the second law of thermodynamics problem number 9 a heat pump heats a room in winter and acts as a refrigerator to cool it in summer the room needs to be maintained at a temperature of 20 degrees centigrade in winter and 25 degrees centigrade in summer okay in the required heat transfers from the room during summer and to the room during winter are the same it is equal to 48000 kilo joule per hour that is in the summer from the room 48000 kilo joules per hour has to be extracted and it should be transferred to the ambient in the winter from the ambient to the room 48000 kilo joule per hour has to be transferred so this is the given information calculate the minimum power required to drive the heat pump if the ambient temperature is 0 degrees during winter okay then b the actual power required to run the heat pump if the cop is 10 the for the same power as input in part a that is when a reversible or see when minimum power required by heat pump that means the heat pump has to be reversible so if the heat pump is reversible it has some power input correct so with the same power input what is the maximum permissible ambient temperature during the summer so this is these are the quantities so let us take winter the room has to be maintained at 20 degree centigrade that is 293 kelvin this is heat pump which will act as a refrigerator now refrigerator so so the winter made it 20 degrees so this we have to transfer heat now the ambient temperature in winter is given as 0 degrees 273 kelvin the heat pump okay this is heat pump so now this has to get some work from the ambient okay and we know that in the winter in order to maintain the room at 20 degrees 48000 kilo joule per hour okay so in the winter it will act as heat pump and in the summer it will act as refrigerator so let us first talk about winter so heat pump heat has to reject 48000 kilo joule per hour in order to maintain the temperature of the room at 20 degree centigrade and this heat it has to pump using the heat which is received by the uh, from the ambient okay so this is the scenario for the winter okay now for minimum first question is um, the minimum power required minimum power required for this so i'll say w minimum okay for this heat pump should be reversible okay that is done now in that case cop of reversible heat pump can be calculated as th divided by th minus tc it is in kelvin so what is th 293 divided by 293 minus 273 so that will be the cop that is 14 0.65 okay so that means if hp the heat pump is reversible then it will work as a carnot heat pump so the cop is calculated by the temperatures of the source and sink itself so from that i can calculate the cop now what is qh qh is given as 48000 kilo joule per hour which is equal to 
डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड किलो जूल पर सेकेंड और किलो वाट ओके ना वाट इज डब्ल्यू देन डब्ल्यू एल सी डब्ल्यू मिनिमम विल बी इक्वल टू वाट इज द डिफिनेशन ऑफ दिस सी ओ पी इज एक्चुअली क्यू हेच द हीट ट्रांसफर विच इज रिक्वयर्ड डिवाइडेड बाई दी द हीट ट्रांसफर विच इज गोइंग टू कास्ट करेक्ट सो दिस सो दैट मीन्स वाट विल बी डब्ल्यू मिनिमम डब्ल्यू मिनिमम विल बी इक्वल टू क्यू हेच डिवाइडेड बाय cop reversible refrigerator a uh, heat pump okay so this is the value so what is w minimum here from this we can calculate w minimum w minimum equal to 0.91 not 1 kilowatts So that is the first part. Okay. So first part, we can see that the temperatures are fixed for the ambient as zero degrees, and uh, at the room in the winter it should be twenty degrees. And we know how much heat has to be transferred to the room in order to maintain the room at twenty degrees, because ambient is at zero degrees. So we have to heat the room. So the rate at which the room has to be heated is also given, forty-eight thousand kilojoule per hour. So now for this. the minimum power required can be calculated if the heat pump is considered as reversible or carnot heat pump so the cop of the carnot heat pump is th by th minus tc so which is 14.65 qh is known as per the definition cop is qh by w min so w min can be calculated as qh by cop which is 0.9101 kilowatts that is part a part b if cop of the heat pump this actual is 10 which is given 10 same load qh is same correct so we can see that cop hp equal to qh by w now w hp will say that is the actual work required so what will be that cop is 10 now so we can say w hp will be equal to Forty-eight thousand divided by three thousand six hundred. That is kilowatts divided by COP of the actual heat pump. That is ten. So which implies the work requirement for the actual heat pump with a COP of ten will be equal to one point three three four kilowatts. That is higher than this. Okay. This is part B. So part C now is. Okay, now in the first part, the power given to the heat pump is point nine one not one. In the summer, this heat pump will work as refrigerator. So we will draw that. So here in summer, ambient temperature of the summer. So let T H S is the Ambient temperature during summer, say thirty-five degrees, forty degrees centigrade, and so on. Now, room has to be maintained. Now, this is a refrigerator. R. Okay. Now, this the room. Room temperature is twenty-five degrees centigrade. Okay. So, room temperature. Is twenty five degree centigrade or two hundred and ninety eight Kelvin. Okay, so we have to pump heat from this. This is colder now. Room has to be uh, colder. So pump heat from this. That will be forty eight thousand. Same as that of the. Okay, the objective heat transfer is same. For the heat pump, it is the heat transfer to the room for the refrigerator it is heat extracted from the room and now this reject some heat so i will say this is qh okay 
okay now this is unknown temperature t h is unknown temperature but what i give as input is work given to the refrigerator is 0.9101 kilowatts 0.9101 kilowatt that is the work minimum work which we supply to the heat pump during the winter operation that is 0.9101 so the same is given here now we have to find what is the temperature here correct so in this case what is the cop of the refrigerator which will be equal to now qc divided by this is qc divided by w so which is equal to 48000 divided by 3600 for converting kilojoule power to kilojoule per second or kilowatts divided by 0.0101 uh, so that is the cop so this should be what this will be same as 14. 14.65 because the heat load is same okay This is same. Now, how will you calculate T H S? T H S basically, if you see the problem for the same power, what is the maximum permissible ambient temperature? When we can reject heat to maximum temperature in the so in this case, if this T H S, if T H S has to be maximum. Okay, then for the given, for the given work input, then refrigerator or should be reversible. okay so in that context i can say cop of the refrigerator can be written in terms of the temperatures that is tc divided by th minus ths minus tc so this is tc okay so we can substitute it 298 divided by ths minus 298 so that will imply the value of t this is known 14.65 so that is THS will come out as 318.34 Kelvin. That's it. Okay. So, so in this problem, this is done in most of the regions where heat pump is used. In the summer, it will act as a refrigerator. In the winter, it acts as a heat pump. Okay. The objective is to keep the temperature of the room hotter than the ambient in the winter. and colder than the ambient in the summer so this is what the illustration is next problem 10th one consider two heat engines x and y so let us say x engine x the heat received by engine x is four times the engine received by the heat received by the engine y okay so the heat received by engine x is four times the heat received by engine y okay let us say so some th it receives i'll say q h x w x q c x t c let us keep like this now similarly y इंजिन वाई So this is the first one. The heat rejected by 
engine X that is Q C X equal to 7 times the heat rejected by engine Y. If the work done by the engine X is work done by the engine X is double the work done by the engine Y. Okay, these are the conditions given. Determine the efficiencies of engine X and engine Y. First, then B. If engine Y is a reversible engine, engine Y is reversible engine and it rejects heat to a cold reservoir at 260 Kelvin. Determine the hot temperature reservoir. What is this value from which it receives heat? Then C. Determine the COP of COP when engine Y is reversed and operated as a refrigerator between the cold reservoir at 260 and hot Kelvin and hot reservoir at 37 degrees centigrade. So, these are the required uh, things. So, first let us do this. So, QHX is equal to 4 QHY, QCX is equal to 7 QCY, WX is equal to 2 WY. Okay. Four Q H Y minus seven Q C Y equal to two W Y. So let us say this is equation three. This is equation okay. Now I will see that I will also write Q H X minus Q C X equal to W X. So this is one. Then uh, Q H Y minus Q C Y equal to W Y. This will be two. Okay. Now I have three equations. I just formed this. So this is written in this way. So now I can say seven into two minus three will give. 3 q h y equal to 5 w y or efficiency of y will be equal to what w y by q h y which is equal to 3 by 5 equal to 0 0.6 okay so with the given data so what you have done is I have run, done first equation is the first law. First law applied to x and applied to y. QHx minus QCx equal to wx. QHy minus QCy equal to wy. Now, since QHx is written as 4 QHy, I can write that. For this, I will write like this. Similarly, QCx equal to 7 QCy. Wx equal to 2 wy. So, I write this. So, from this, I have two equations. 2 and 3, I can use to solve, uh, eliminate one of the variables. Like in this case, I have eliminated by multiplying 2 by 7 and subtracting 2, 3, I have eliminated QCY. So, I got a relationship between QHY and WY. And I want the ratio of WY by QHY because that is the efficiency of the engine Y. That has come out as 0.6. So, that is the first part. Second part is, B. Okay, A determine the efficiency of X. So, X also I have to do now. X is efficiency of X equal to WX divided by QHX equal to what? WX is 2WY divided by 4QX, uh, QHY. So, which is equal to half into 0.6 equal to 0.3. That is the efficiency of the x. Because from the previous, I know wy by qx equal uh, qhy equal to 0.6. Now, when substitute, I do half. 1, 2 by 4 is 1 by 2 into 
this ratio is half 0.6 so i can get 0 0.3 that is the efficiency of this so that is the part a then y is reversible okay so that means efficiency of y can be written as qc by qhy which can be written as tc in kelvin divided by th in kelvin so which is written as 1 minus 298 as a 260 260 divided by th that is what i have to find so go back here tc is given as 260 and th value is asked if engine y is a reversible engine and it rejects heat to a cold reservoir at 260 determine the hot reservoir temperature that is th so now i know the efficiency is 0 0.6 so i can say 0 0.6 equal to 1 minus 260 divided by th which implies th will be equal to 650 kelvin okay so that is the second part then third part c what is the third part determine the cop when engine y is reversed so for example now it will receive heat from the tc and reject heat to th and receive work from environment so it is reversed so reversible engine can act as a reversible uh, reversed and act as a refrigerator now the temperatures are given 260 cold reservoir hot reservoir is 37 degrees centigrade okay now we can draw this this is 37 degree centigrade and uh, i will say qh this is refrigerator refrigerator y i will say now this is qc this is 260 kelvin and uh, now w is taken in okay now what is asked is what will be the cop when reversible engine is reversed okay when y is reversed to operate as a refrigerator okay then cop will be equal to what tc divided by th minus tc because it is reversed so reversible correct so that will be equal to 260 TC divided by TH is 337. So 37 means what? 273 plus 37 equal to 310 Kelvin. So this is 310 minus 260. So this will be equal to 5.2. 5.2 is the COP. That's it. That is what is asked. Okay. So combination of engines and uh, from one engine we can attach the rates of heat transfers and find the values of work efficiencies etc so this is about the problem number 10 so in all these cases you can see that the reservoirs are at certain temperatures and uh, the efficiency or cop can be calculated with respect to temperatures only when the engine or heat pump or refrigerator is reversible so that is the problem number 10 Problem number 11, a rigid vessel contains 2 kg of air initially at 100 kilo Pascals and 300 Kelvin. Okay, let us draw this, a rigid vessel, 2 kg air, P1 equal to 100 kilo Pascals, T1 equal to 300 Kelvin. The air is stirred until the temperature becomes 500 Kelvin. Determine the stirring work required assuming there is no heat loss. Okay, so that means I put a stirrer like this and stir. So, work transfer I am doing so that the temperature rises to 500. Uh, Kelvin. Now we can assume that in this case 
the vessel is insulated so there is no heat loss so q equal to 0 that is the first situation now what is the stirring work required that is the first part second part is if the same final state that is i have to increase the temperature from 300 kelvin to 500 kelvin but this final state is to be attained in a reversible manner determine the work required that means what i have to do i have to take this this is 2 kg air this is a this is b 2 kg air and uh, here initial pressure is 100 kilo pascals temperature is 300 kelvin but i have to increase the temperature to 500 kelvin what i will do reversible manner that means i will put a heat pump and supply heat to this the heat pump will receive some work from the ambient so this is the work I, we are asking here correct what is the work required now obviously ambient from ambient only i have to take heat this ambient is 300 kelvin let us say and uh, when you do this the temperature increases from 300 to 500 so what is this work what is the stirring work so i will say here the stirring work is ws and this is the reversible work that is w so how to calculate this there are two situations so let us say the case one okay um, q minus w equal to delta u okay now what is q q is zero because it's given assuming there is no heat loss so that means w equal to minus delta u equal to u1 minus u2 equal to m into cv into t1 minus t2 that is the work required it is negative obviously because of the fact that work is given from the surroundings to the system so what is m 2 kgs what is cv cv of air so let us say r of air is 287 or let us assume cv itself directly there is no problem cv let us take as 0 0.7207 kilo joule per kg kelvin so let us say that cv is available with me then i can get the value of w equal to 2 into 0 0.7207 into what is this t1 300 minus 500 so this will be equal to minus 288.28 kilojoules. So that much work if I do, stirring work if I do, temperature will increase from 300 to 500 Kelvin in the rigid vessel which is insulated. Second case, what I am trying to do here is in, instead of doing stirring, I employ a heat pump. This heat pump is assumed to be reversible okay because i want to find the minimum work required from for this heat pump. so let's say assume this heat pump to be reversible and uh, now ambient temperature is 300 initially the air is also at 300 kelvin now when i take heat from the ambient to the heat pump and supply it to the rigid vessel then its temperature increases slowly Ambient is a reservoir, so its temperature remains constant. Correct. So, so let us say at a small time interval, I will supply a heat to the vessel, which is delta Q H, and let T H be the temperature of the vessel at any time instant. Similarly, del Q C is the heat I remove from the ambient. Ambient temperature is always at 300 kelvin and uh, during this period del w is supplied to the engine okay so i can say a yeah, reversible heat pump is used so b used to heat or supply heat to the vessel 
containing air at 300 kelvin 100 kilo pascals ok comma by extracting heat from ambient at 300 kelvin now it requires minimum work w to accomplish this because it is reversible correct so that work only we will compare now we will try to get okay so since the heat pump is reversible I can say Q H by Q C equal to T H by T C or I can say here del Q C okay del Q H by T H equal to del Q C by T C I can write this correct So, ratio of heat transfers is equal to ratio of the temperatures in Kelvin. So, that is what we are trying to write here. So, from this I can write this equation del Q H by T H equal to del Q H by T C. Now, T C is say I will say T naught ambient temperature. So, I will say T naught T C equal to T naught constant ambient temperature. Now you have to understand that TH is not a constant, okay. TH, this is constant. TH is not a constant because it varies from 300 to 500 degrees in uh, 500 Kelvin. Okay, now first law. for air as a system, air in the vessel as the system we can say d u equal to del q minus del w since I can assume kinetic energy changes and potential energy changes are 0 and uh, d e equal to d u now. Okay? but rigid vessel constant volume ok so that implies del w which is equal to p d v equal to 0 which has no other form of work here no stirring etc right just we have to heat this so there is no other form of work displacement work is also 0 because there is no change in the volume this means del q will be equal to du which is equal to m c v d t ok. So, now I can specifically write as what del q h equal to m mass of the air into c v into d t h ok. Note that d t h is positive why because it, it is increasing temperature increases from 300 to 500 Kelvin now we can write del Q C by T naught equal to del Q H by T H which is equal to now instead of del Q H I can write this correct so M C V D T H by T H so that means del q c will be written as t naught into m into c v into d t h by t h now this i can integrate integrating 
between initial and final temperatures of air okay so qc equal to integral t1 to t2 del qc equal to t0 m cv integral t1 to t2 okay this is uh, this is the temperature initial temperature and final temperature d t h by t h so which is equal to m cv t not natural logarithm of t2 by t1 okay now i can calculate uh, how will i calculate this now qc is calculated now because m is known it is given in the problem okay 2 kg so m is known cv from this we have already taken cv as 0.7207 t1 is 300 kelvin and t2 is 500 kelvin so that i know so i can calculate this okay what is w w equal to qh minus qc so how can i get qh qh del qh i can write as m cv dth that means qh can be written as m cv t2 minus t1 okay t1 equal to t0 note that t1 equal to t0 equal to 300 kelvin so that you can use so now i can write w as m cv t0 to t2 divided by t0 minus 1 minus natural logarithm of t2 by t1 so this is the expression so you can substitute and see so t0 t2 T t2 by t0 into t0 will be t2 and uh, minus t0 so that will be this so uh, this is the qh and the qc is uh, m cv t0 into natural logarithm of t2 by t1 when i substitute this i will say this will be 0.7207 uh, into t0 is 300 into 500 t2 is uh, 500 kelvin divided by 300 minus 1 minus logarithm of 500 by 300 which is equal to 67.4 kilo joules okay now i get 67.4 kilo joules but previously when i want to heat this from temperature as rise from 300 to 500 by stirring about 288.28 kilo joules has to be supplied now if i do this using a reversible heat pump i only supply 64.67.4 kilo 67.4 kilo joules so see that tremendous reject, uh, reduction in the work from 288 to 67 kilo joules has been accomplished so that is a better way to do even see this is a reversible heat pump even if the reversible heat pump is replaced by actual heat pump then also we can see that the cop if uh, the cop is not so low then we will uh, supply only a smaller amount of work to accomplish this heat uh, so that is when you want to heat the room better to use a heat pump than a direct uh, for example electrical heater etc so this is the problem 11 problem